3 plus blank equals 8. What number goes in the blank? 5. I'm not so concerned with the number 5 right now as I am with that blank. Did anybody feel any anxiety when you saw that blank up there and I asked you to fill it in? Anybody feel any anxiety? Most people don't. Okay. What if I put a question mark there? And I said, 3 plus question mark equals 8. Does that scare anybody? Usually not. What if I put a box up there and said, put a number in the box that makes that statement true? 3 plus something in the box equals 8. Does the box scare anybody? I'm seeing a lot of head shaking, which is good. You know where I'm going with this. What could I put there that would strike fear and terror into the hearts of math students everywhere? I could put a letter there, like an X, or a Q, or heaven forbid, a Greek theta, or something like that. Now, let me try to help you get over your fear of letters. That letter is nothing more than a blank, or a box, or a question mark. In fact, if you see an equation that looks like this, if it will help you, just rewrite it like that and solve the thing and come out with box equals 5 and say, oh yeah, i got to change it back to x equals 5. And if that will help you, do it that way. Because I don't care how you do a problem. As long as you show me what you did, as long as everything you did was mathematically correct and you got the right answer, full credit. So whatever you can do that will help you not be afraid. Now, here's another thing that sometimes causes us anxiety about a letter like X. You say, well, here's the thing that bothers me. 3 plus X equals 8. But over here, they tell me that 2 times X equals 20. What number has to go there for X? 10 has to go there, doesn't it? And I said, well, what the heck? I thought X was X. How come it's 5 here and it's 10 here? Okay, that's another thing that kind of throws us about letters. But actually, there's a situation that's very similar to that that doesn't throw us at all. For instance, if we said, uh, Christina went shopping, blah, 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 blah. She bought, blah, 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 blah. Here's a little thing called a pronoun. What noun is this pronoun taking the place of in this sentence? Christina. Okay. We read somewhere else. The old man and the slip down by the sea. He saw a seagull. Ah, oops, the old woman went down by the sea. She saw a seagull. Alright. Who does this she stand for now? Stands for the old woman. That didn't cause us any confusion, did it? A pronoun is just something that takes the place of a noun. And it's going to take the place of a different noun depending on the sentence that it's in. A letter is a variable, meaning it varies, it changes, and it takes the place of a number. But that number is different depending on the sentence that we see in it. Okay? So that's just a placeholder. It just stands for a number. If it helps you, just pretend like you knew the number and say, what would I do if I knew that number? Well, I'd do that same thing if it's X. How many of you have had some sort of beginning or basic algebra in the last five years? Okay. Chapter 5 has a little, oops, I said the A word, sorry. Didn't, didn't mean to cause any anxiety. Chapter 5 has just a couple of little things with X's in it. From now on after chapter 5, you won't ever have to use that again. Okay, so don't panic. We, we take a non-algebraic approach in this class. But let's look at just the basics of solving a simple equation. Think of it like this. Let's say you have some land. This is your land. We don't know how much you have. It's just some amount. And let's say we give you three more acres than what you had before. Do you now have the same amount of land, more land, or less land than you did before? You have more land, don't you? In 
other words, I can't go around adding three to stuff and expect it to stay the same. Would everybody agree with that? My age is not the same as my age plus three. Okay? Now, let's say I have some land. This is my land. And let's say somebody gives me three more acres. Do I have the same, less, or more land now? More. I have more land, don't I? Now, let's pretend that I don't know how much you have, I don't know how much I have, but let's pretend we know that they're the same. Okay? We know that your land is the same amount as my land. Now, if I add three to your land and I do the same thing to my land, you have more than you had before, I have more than I had before. But do we still have the same amount? And the answer is yes, isn't it? When we have a statement with an equal sign in it, an equation, that means we can do the same thing to both those things, and they'll still be the same as each other. Neither one will be the same as it was before, okay? but they'll still both be equal to each other. Does that make sense? So when we see a statement, 3 plus x equals 8. Let's pretend we didn't know the answer. Okay, I mean, we all know what the answer is, but let's pretend we didn't. We can do anything to both sides of this that we want, as long as we do the same thing to both sides. Now, what we want to do is, we want to know what that question mark is. We want to know what that box is. We want to know what that blank is. We want to get that thing all by itself and everything else on the other side. So, what is this 3 doing to this x mathematically? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. It is being added, isn't it? 3 plus x. So, if I want to get rid of that 3, I do the opposite. The opposite addition is subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 3 from this side over here. Well, to be fair and to keep them equal, I'm going to have to subtract 3 from that side. And now, 3 minus 3 is what? Zero. That's just 0. And 0 plus anything is just the anything, isn't it? So I've got x over there. And over here, I've got 8 minus 3. And that's 5. Okay. Now, the reason we learn to do this kind of thing said, well, what's, what good is that? I could have told you that just by looking at it. Yes, but there will come a time when we'll see equations that we can't tell what the answer is just by looking at it. And if we don't learn these procedures, then we won't be able to solve the other things. Whereas if we learn these procedures, we say, hey, give me your best shot. Throw the hardest equation you can at me because I know I can do all these things to it. And I'll just keep working at it until I get X on one side, something else on the other, and I'll say, that's what it is. Okay? Now, again, don't worry too much because after chapter 5, you never have to do that again. But if you like solving equations, you can approach the whole course with that, and in some ways, it's a lot easier for you. But I approach the course with most people I've found take this course because it will substitute for college algebra in their degree. So, uh, we take a non-algebraic approach, and I'll show you other ways to do it. But uh, I'll leave that for, for uh, next week. If you'll, uh, oh, by the way, there are PowerPoints on the textbook website that show, you know, kind of summarize through the chapters. But uh, look at the parts on how to solve an equation, multiplying both sides of the same thing, dividing, that sort of thing. All right, any questions on that before we go on?